Hello everyone, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. I'm Andre from PSD Box, and uh, in this video I want to show you how to create a, a really nice manipulation. This was the image that I started with and I ended up with this. So I want to show you how to create uh, this manipulation. And one of the things that I really want to show you is how to get to this um, color and light effect because I used a few adjustments and I want to show the blend modes that I use and everything because uh, this was the structure, let's call it, of the manipulation after I added all of these uh, elements and I ended up with this um, with this effect. So I want to show how to get this, uh, this effect and I chose this um, romantic uh, scene because it's almost uh, Valentine's Day um, so well, I thought uh, I would make something um, on that theme. So I hope you will like this manipulation tutorial. Uh, it will be one of the long uh, tutorials that I have. So I guess it will take about an hour or so. We'll see. So I hope you enjoy it. This new tutorial is brought to you by my new sponsor Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, online portfolio or even e-commerce websites. And for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code PSDBOX. Uh, remember, 10% off on your first purchase using the code PSDBOX on squarespace.com. So as I said, this will be uh, maybe a long tutorial with uh, lots of details and everything. So uh, get ready for that. Uh, get a drink or something. I don't want to sp uh, to split it into parts, so I'll make it a single video um, because I, I I prefer to do that. And uh, for this tutorial, I used uh, images from Deposit Photos uh, because they are cheaper and well. Uh, but I also used uh, images from uh, Deviant Art, so I'll give you the links to them. You can check the video description if you want to. Uh, you'll find the link there to uh, that will take you to my website, and there you'll find all the links uh, to the stock images. And uh, I'll also give you a smaller resolution uh, for the images from Deposit Photos, so you can follow the tutorial. But uh, remember that for premium users, uh, you can download if you're a premium uh, member on PSD Box. Dot com you can download uh, this PSD file along with the video and all the stock images used so uh, if you want to get a subscription there you'll also support uh, PSD box which is always welcomed so well uh, let's get started uh, with this um, tutorial so what I will do is press Control command O to uh, open this window and there's this uh, stock folder with all the images used uh, for this tutorial. So we will start with this uh, image uh, which uh, is the uh, base for our for our image here, for our composition. So what you do is get the pen tool okay, because we need to eliminate this background. You can use other techniques if you want, you can use the quick selection tool to select uh, this part here and the couple, but I prefer to use the pen tool because it's a lot better, uh, well, at least in my opinion. So what I do is uh, make sure you set the pen tool set to path and just uh, create a path like that and follow along this edge here and do something like that and then follow the contour here. I will not do it because um, I already have a tutorial on how to do that and I don't want to spend time on doing this. But uh, as you can see, it's quite easy. Just follow that um, really carefully. And when you get to the hair, uh, on the hair of the boy, you can actually make a selection like that and don't worry too much. Uh, we have a little uh, problem here, which is because we have a lot of um, single hairs here, which is hard to follow with the pen tool. And it's pretty hard to mask in, in some cases. So what you do is just leave a space like that. And we will deal with this a bit later. So and when you get here, just uh, follow the edge as you would usually do get here and follow that edge there then zoom out a bit and just uh, close the path like that this is what I do to make uh, to extract the background so you can as I said you can use other techniques if you want to and then right click and choose make selection and set the feather to zero everything as it is click OK and you will turn that into a selection 
and then you can click the layer mask icon to create the layer mask and if it's inverted like in this case you press Control command i and that way you remove the background and you, all you need to do is extract this part here and you do the same uh, you can cut the hair of the of the woman there as i said we will deal with that we'll bring it back a bit later so do something like that or you can leave this part as it is and we will mask it later and remove this part as well and this one as well also be careful with this part because i almost forgot to to take it out what i will do is go here to my other document and get the image already extracted as you can see this is the the result that i got and <clears throat> you can see i left this part here um, uh, as it was i didn't mask it and this is the space that i left on the woman's uh, hair so what i will do in order to get this image to my other document is disable the layer mask for a second Control a edit copy merged and create a new document just because I want the dimensions and now I will re-enable the layer mask and copy merged so you will not have to do this because you will need to extract the background yourself and you will have uh, the dimension ready set there so what I will do is decrease the size of the image a bit because I'm also recording the video so I'll type about um, 2500 pixels and click OK I just want to make sure that I don't get any lag or something. Um, okay, so let's uh, get started. Once you have uh, the couple extracted from the background, you should have something like this. And the next thing that we will do is create our background. So press Control Command O again to open the background. And this is the image that I used as a background. You can use anything you want. You can use um, a CD at night, well, uh, if you want to use a CD at night, you will have to change the lighting here. So uh, you uh, find an image that is uh, shot on daylight. I use this one because it had this sort of a um, heart uh, tree here. I, I'm sure this was photoshopped. This is really nice. And I, I liked it, so I will use this one. So Control A, Control C, Control W. And paste my image, create a new doc, a new layer. Let's name this couple. Create a new layer under. And you can do that if you press and hold the control the command key and click on the new layer icon and that will create the new layer below the layer that you selected and press, press control command V to paste my background there and now control command T to load the free transform because this is huge you can see it here and I want to make it smaller so I'll press and hold the shift key and click on this button here. The shift key is to constrain the proportions uh, in case you didn't know. So because I don't want to distort it like that so I want to make sure I preserve the aspect ratio of the image and we will see where we will need to put this. Uh, for now I'll leave it here just a bit bigger like that and we will leave it there. Okay now we have um, the background and the foreground and then I started to add elements, but what I didn't like here was that uh, it was a bit too high here, so I wanted to lower the couple layer, so I just dragged it down a bit, like so. I didn't want to cut the feet, so um, keep it uh, on, the, on the canvas there. The next thing that I added is some columns here, so again, press Ctrl Command O, go to the stock folder, and again I used an image from Deposit Photos. I found some images on Devin Art, but I didn't really like them, so um, I liked the aspect of these ones, and they were straight, which is uh, what I wanted. So again, uh, I tried to use the, um, the magic wand tool, but it didn't really work, so I'll use the pen tool again. And I'll start from the top here, this is really easy to mask, just uh, create a really quick path, like that. When you work with the pen tool, a bit of practice is needed if you never use it before, but once you get used to it, uh, you will like it. And the results that you get with, uh, with it are really nice. So, create the path like that. So, and do something like that there. 
Okay, and let's close our path here. And turn this into a selection, okay. And create the layer mask and our background is gone. What I will do is apply the layer mask because um, when you apply, if you leave the layer mask as it is, you can see the dimensions uh, of this file is, um, uh, the size of it is 61 megabytes. And when I apply the layer mask, it should, uh, you can see that now it's 28. So um, if you want to reduce the size of the document, apply the layer masks. And uh, in this case, the cut was perfect, so I don't need uh, the layer mask anymore. And what I will do now is select the move tool, click on the canvas itself, and drag it to my other tab here, and let it go here. And now I'll name this left column, and I'll drag it uh, below, between the couple and the sky, uh, uh, and the background, sorry. Let's end this BG for background, and we need to make this smaller. That's about 30% of the original size. It's still too big, so again, with the help of the shift key, you can make you can make it a bit smaller, uh, keeping the perspective, the um, aspect ratio. Sorry. Okay, we have the left column, and the next thing I want to do is duplicate it with Control Command J. And let's name this right column and delete the copy there. And let's move it there. And now press Control Command T to the free transform. Right click on it and flip horizontal. So all this, uh, all that I'm doing here, I would call this a standard operation on when you make a, a manipulation because this is a this is the main part of a manipulation just cutting things and uh, placing them on the on the right place and then we will do once we have everything on the scene we will start making adjustments uh, shadows color adjustments and things like that but the first thing we want to do is have our structure here have everything uh, on the image before we start making any adjustments and i see that I have a bit of a space there a bit of a gap Okay, now let's move this a couple of pixels more to the right. Okay, and we're good to go. More details, I added some plants here because this was a bit of, uh, it was a bit too boring, so I wanted to add a bit, uh, make this, um, this whole scenario here a bit more romantic and a bit, uh, a bit more full of life, okay? so. I used some other images and I used this uh, 3D render of this uh, bush and you can see the name of the author here. As I said, on my website, you have the link to this uh, stock image made by Broken Wing Stock. Uh, it's from DeviantArt. Okay, so uh, let's delete that because I want to cut, to cut part of this uh, from here. Control Command C. Go back, and what I will do is um, put the columns inside a group. We'll, we'll create a few groups here. Um, let's name these columns. And the reason why I put this into groups is because I will add um, adjustments. And in Photoshop CS6, you can make adjustments as clipping mask for the whole group. And I think in previous versions of Photoshop, you cannot do that. So if you don't, if you cannot do it, you'll have to. Uh, use for example here in this group you'll have to use two adjustment layers but uh, it's as easy as that and what I'll do is um, paste that image here and before doing anything I'll select the layer and press Control command G to create another group which I will name plants and I'll name this uh, plant one or plant left because I'll put it on the left column and press Control command t to load the free transform and make it smaller. Let's see how small. Now the size of this depends, I cannot tell you 30% uh, or 50% because it depends on the canvas size that you have. I have 2000 pixels. So I'll put it here. Um, I like how it looks here. I'll leave it there. And I'll, I'll copy the other one. The reason why I don't duplicate it, I could duplicate it, but uh, I have another one here which is different so uh, well actually I think it's just it's the same one but it's flipped uh, let's see take a closer look uh, maybe I'm not sure uh, I'll copy it 
instead of duplicating it. And let's paste it there and name this plant right. Again, we make it smaller and put it here. Again, we need to add a few adjustments to this to change the brightness and everything. But we will do that a bit later. Uh, let's continue adding more plants. Let's close this and open this ivy uh, plant here. I really love this stock image. It's great and it's really high resolution. Um, and it's a real plant. It's not a render. So I think at least that's what I think. It's a, I think it's a real plant. Um, so what I'll do is uh, select everything, control C, and I don't want to quit Photoshop. So what I will do is paste the image of that plant here on top of the couple layer. I'll name this IV low one. And of course I have to make it smaller. And let's leave it about here, I think. Now I will duplicate this with Control Command J, and I'll name the I'll change the name to Ivy Low Two. Obviously, we need to move it a bit. I'll leave it there, or maybe I don't know, rotate it just a bit. Duplicate again, and place it. Maybe flip it horizontally, and maybe make it a bit smaller. So just uh, move it around a bit and. Uh, place it somewhere uh, there. There's one thing I want to delete on this image using the eraser, which is this part here. And this part here as well on the other one. Um, you can see, for example, you see these two drops of water here. But this, I have the IV low to select. I want to show how to select uh, layers without uh, coming to the layers palette. Now I have the Ivy Low 2, which is this one here, and I want to select this one, but I don't want to select it manually like that. I want to select it right from the canvas. So what you do is press the V key to select the Move tool. I, I do this really quickly. I did it here, but I don't know how many of you noticed it. Um, so press the V key to select the Move tool, press and hold the Control Command key, and click on the plant itself and you can see how that it selected the layer automatically for me and now it's like the V the I press the E key to select the eraser and uh, remove that so uh, it was really quick uh, you do that I I do it instantly because I'm used to, to that control so just press the V key press and hold the control command and then click on the element that you want to select and it will select the layer that belongs to that element and now I will rename this to um, Ivy Low 3. So we have these three plants here. I'll select the three of them pressing the shift key and clicking on the last one and press Control command G to group it. And I renamed that to Ivy Low. Uh, one thing that I don't like here is this black spot. I should have used the clone stamp to, to cover it because it's, it's a bit ugly. Let's try that. Um, a clone stamp tool. Let's reduce the hardness to about 20 and press and hold the Alt key. Make sure you have the um, sample all layers um, because, our, because I want to paint this on a new layer. And I click from here, go down and paint over that. And now try to fix the edge here, like that. And now I will show you how to blend uh, that because you can see the luminosity is not matching. First try to uh, match it as close as you can. But once you're done, if you zoom at 100% you can, you can kind of tell that this was painted. So what you do is, let's zoom back in. Is reduce the opacity and the flow uh, to about let's say 30 and the flow as well uh, by the way you can do that without uh, typing here anything um, with the tool selected uh, if you press on the numeric keyboard if you type 50 for example it types 50 
uh, 36, uh, 47. So just by typing the numbers, uh, you set the opacity. And if you want to set the flow, just press and hold the shift key while you type the, num the numbers. Let's say 50, and that uh, controls the flow. So the reason why I set a lower number here is because now we can uh, sample and just paint on top of that and we type with a lower opacity so it blends a lot better but it's too strong so let's leave it to 30 which was my initial guess I can see it works a bit better uh, don't make too many passes because that will uh, it will start to remove the texture which is not what you want so just a couple of passes to uh, to blend that a bit better so you can see now it looks a bit more decent you can fix these parts here as well if you want to, but uh, I will not spend time on all of them. Okay, more plants. Uh, I added another set of ivy, um, which uh, are from this stock image. Um, again, I'll give you the links. These are from DeviantArt. Again, a lot of uh, many thanks to the author that created these plants. Really useful for manipulations like this. And I'll put these ones inside the plants group uh, because these are... Um, I want to add... A st um, levels adjustment later on on the same on the whole group so I'll flip this um, like that let's name this ivy column one and I'll drag them um, instead of one let's type right um, I want to drag this below the that red plant there okay something like that maybe move this a bit around and place that there then just duplicate it and make it a bit smaller and maybe place it there and flip it horizontally okay like that and now let's copy the other one well actually let's leave the same one and just to duplicate those two layers and that's it and press uh, in order to duplicate them I'll press uh, and hold the alt key click on the the two layers that I selected uh, on the bottom one and drag them below the plant left and let go and that will duplicate the layers and I'll move now both of them on the other side right there like so uh, maybe I will rotate this one slightly or maybe change the position of of them like that okay and on the other ones maybe change the position a bit as well okay let's leave them like that and maybe move this a bit lower okay we have all the plants there all we need to add now is that bike so let's press the control command o to open this window and open the bike and um, we are lucky that this is a PNG file because this would take forever to extract so again many thanks to the author that took the time and removed the background of this uh, really amazing stock image you can see it's perfectly um, it's perfectly uh, masked so all you need to do is press control command A and control command C to copy it and I'll minimize the plants group and we have this group here, which was, yeah, the wall fix. And I'll paste this um, bike on top of everything. And I'll name it bike. Of course, we need to make it smaller. So again, control command T. And let's try about 50%. Um, you, don't need, you don't have to make it too small. Uh, so we need, you kind of have to match the size uh, take a look at the couple and judge the best you can uh, the size that it needs to be maybe just a bit bigger at about 55% or something like that and I'll drag it down and put it here like uh, it's resting there on the on the wall like it's parked there or something okay so let's leave the bike there and add more elements uh, let's add this lamp as well so I'll get the polygonal lasso tool and select this lamp because uh, we have the shot uh, we have the shot from the side 
press control command C to copy it and go back to my document and again paste it on top of everything and name this lamp left control command T to make it smaller and we have to make it a lot smaller and place it right here um, even smaller like that zoom in a bit so we can see it better I cannot zoom in um, I want to place it right there uh, where you see that indentation here on the column so there and then duplicate that and let's name this lamp right and of course we need to flip it right now it's on top of the other one so press ctrl command t right click on it and choose flip horizontal and press enter and now you can drag it on the other side and now we have it right there Okay, uh, I want to modify the background. I want this tree to be visible and that lamp covers part of it. So what I will do is select the background layer and now you can see that now we have these columns here so uh, we can make it a bit smaller like that and from the other side as well. And maybe drag it a bit higher up, not much. About that. So now it, I think it looks a bit better than before. Okay, um, from this to this, I think it, it looks a bit better. And the last thing that I added is a little bird using uh, this 3D render. Uh, you can find a real bird if you want to, but uh, I think this one was uh, good enough. Although if you have a really high resolution image, if you, if you zoom in, you can kind of tell it's a 3D render, <laughs> but anyways. So I flipped it. Um, the reason I put it here on this lamp because the this area of the image is already too has too many detail. We have the branches here and everything, and I didn't want to um, fill it with too much detail. So I wanna. This was a lot emptier this area, so uh, I placed it here. Let's make it way smaller. How about that small and you can probably put it there on top of that but it doesn't really look too nice I think well, anyways if you watch it at 100% it looks okay let's name this bird and I changed the color on the bird's chest using the hue saturation adjustment so press ctrl command u and just uh, move the hue slider until you get a red tone like that and click OK and that's it and that's how I change the colors <laughs> really as simple as that there's no need to use a, an adjustment layer for that oh, well you can do it if you want to but I didn't use it so well we have the structure we have everything on the scene um, we need to take care of details like masking the hair and starting to add all the shadows and lights and adjustments and everything so uh, let's first start with the shadows and the light uh, adjustments. I got another great news for you. My new sponsor Squarespace is looking for 30 engineers and designers to expand uh, their team. So uh, if you interview for a design or engineer uh, job, you will get to stay one weekend in New York and stay at the Soho Grand Hotel. Also remember that uh, if you want to sign up on Squarespace, uh, you can use the uh, code PSDBOX and you will get 10% off on your first purchase. And if you sign up for one year, you'll also get a free domain name, which is, uh, which is great. And of course, you also uh, get the hosting and all the templates that they have there, which uh, remember that they're all responsive. So your portfolio and designs will be ready for mobile devices like iPads, iPhones or smartphones. So if you want to be part of the Squarespace team, uh, again, they're looking for 30 designers and engineers. So if you interview for one of these uh, two jobs, Squarespace will pay you and your spouse or partner a whole weekend 
on New York at the Soho Grand Hotel. So all that's left for me to say is good luck and let's continue with uh, our tutorial now. I'll start creating the shadows from the bottom up so I will start with this uh, low wall ivy plants. Um, so what you do is open the layer styles for, for, for each one of, uh, of them. Uh, you can also in Photoshop CS6 you can use uh, as I said the styles for the whole group so you can double click on the group and open the layer styles and I will do that if you don't have Photoshop CS6 just use the drop shadow on each layer in the, uh, in the individually so uh, what I'll do is just zoom in at 100% so I can see it better and uh, I want the, sh the shadow to fall on the left side so I'll change the angle a bit and of course I want to reduce the opacity and also I want to reduce the size to about I don't know let's try five the size controls let me increase the opacity so you can see it better the size controls the the sharpness of the shadow so if you leave it at zero they are sharp the shadow the shadow is really sharp and if you want a soft shadow you increase the size um, I want to leave it on at about five as I said to just have it a bit blurred um, the distance uh, controls the distance as the name says and I want to leave it at about seven or six uh, not 40 not 36 six okay and I want to reduce the opacity quite a lot also you can take a look at the original shadows we have almost no shadows really really soft here I tried to mimic that using the size but when you zoom out they really look awful so I prefer to use a, a low opacity instead and have a sharp shadow and you can see the, the difference uh, it's quite significant it's almost invisible when you look at it but uh, if you deactivate it, you can see that it's really flat if you don't have any shadow so I'll just leave a bit of shadow there Incre maybe even the distance reduce it to about five or something like that so I have now the shadow on all three ivy plants because I added it to the group itself instead of adding it to each layer. So if you have Photoshop CS6, uh, CS6 you can do that as well. Uh, let's go with the bike now. Uh, I'll select the layers as I just uh, commented a moment ago by using the move tool, pressing and holding the control key and clicking on the object and uh, that will select the layer for me. I'll, again I'll use the drop shadow here but uh, we will have a small problem if you do that now let me show you that so again I'll use a drop shadow I want the same angle and maybe I want a bit more distance and a bit more of a blur and I want to reduce the opacity quite a lot here to about 20 25 but the problem that we will have here is that now part of the shadow falls on this background here which is not what we want so there are two solutions for that the easiest one is to just move the bike lower like that so that way the shadow falls on the wall but if you leave it like that you can see that shadow there looks unrealistic so you can either move the bike there or you can also uh, you can what you can also do is turn the effect into a layer and I'll show you how to do that um, you can right click on the effects link on the effects icon there right click on it and choose create layer and you'll have this uh, message maybe and click OK and what that does is it turns that drop shadow into its own layer uh, which is what we want for this because now you can create this uh, drop shadow as a clipping mask for the couple layer or you can also select this uh, couple layer and then select by shadow invert the selection and use the eraser to erase that shadow like that and that's it and as simple as that and then reactivate this uh, bike layer and in order to make sure they're always um, moving together you can select both layers and link them with uh, by right clicking on that and choose link layers and that way when you move one the bike for example the shadows the shadow will move uh, with it but you have to make sure that um, you see that I deleted the top part so keep in mind that you deleted part of the shadow okay we have the shadows for the bike um, let's move on with the plants here on the columns um, 
I'll start with this red plant. Um, uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you use this, this technique of using the move tool and to select layers without uh, selecting them from here is that when you select the move tool you have this option here that says uh, um, select the layer or the group so when you press and hold the control key if you press on a on an element that's inside a group instead of selecting this layer it will select the whole group so uh, check that out it selected the plants the plants group instead of selecting the this particular layer of the plant but if you set this to layer if I do this now again you can see it expands the group and it selects this particular layer so uh, keep that in mind when you when you use this uh, to select layers so uh, the first thing I want to do is make this a bit brighter so I'll add a levels adjustment above the plants group and since I only want this effect, uh, this uh, adjustment to affect the plants group, I'll create it as a clipping mask. So I'll right click and choose create clipping mask. And now this levels adjustment will only affect the plants group. And I have the settings. Uh, I wrote them down here on a piece of paper. And that's 1.17 for the midtones. And 222 for the highlights so you can see I made them a lot brighter now there they were too they were too dark now let's select uh, let's deal with this two IV plant with these two red uh, green plants sorry um, so these are these two plants here so what do you want to do I want to colorize them and I want to make them a bit darker I hope I can achieve both things with only one action <laughs> I'll see that so double click on the layer and activate the color overlay and I have the color value here so click this color button here and the color value is 45662 so I have an E so I have this dark green and I changed the blend mode of this to hard light and then I decreased the opacity to 70 and you can see now it looks a bit darker and a bit greener and I think I want to use a darker tone yeah it looks a bit better so you can try a darker tone depending on how bright your plant already is and now I want to copy this effect to this other plant on its left so I'll press and hold the alt key click on the FX uh, button here this icon and drag it to the other layer and you can see it's, a, it's really good to have your um, layers named correctly because that way uh, you can see you can you cannot even see the plant here so that's why uh, the name is useful uh, of course you can change that if you go here on the top right of the layers palette there's this icon here which allows you to change the panel options and you can change this um, thumbnail contents to layer bounds and when you click OK what it happens is the layer uh, takes the shape of um, well it's actually just the plant itself so you can see it better but I prefer to have it the other way uh, let's go back to the panel options I prefer to have the entire document because well uh, most of the times you can see something and you can see the position uh, where that is located so in this case the red plant here on the left so I prefer to have it that way and also because I have the same size for the thumbnails and I don't know there's just I prefer to use it that way but you can change it if you want to and I'll do the same I'll drag this effect to this other two ivy plants on the on the left side here so you can see the effect and for the shadows we will do the same we will use uh, I only I will only add the shadows for the ivy plants um, I'll just add it for the ivies and let's see how it looks. See that shadow there? I think it looks nice with the default settings. So, uh, well, actually, actually add the shadows and the drop and the, um, the shadow and the color overlay before you uh, before you copy the effect. Because now I have to copy it again and see that this is what I was talking about. See that shadow there? I'm too lazy to select and delete it to convert it into a layer so what I'll do is just simply move that inside there and that's it uh, that's a quick the quick fix okay 
like that and let's copy the effect on these two other plants here with the alt key and click and drag and again we need to move this one here and maybe rotate it just a bit I would probably decrease the opacity a bit to I don't know to about 60 or 50 but well I'll leave it like that okay so now we have the shadows on the plants there on the bike and we don't need to add shadows here on the on the couple uh, feet and it looks okay like it is let's deal now with uh, the hair so I'll minimize this group and let's find our couple there and there you have several options here you can use the refine the refine edge I'll show you how to do that you just select the entire uh, you press and hold the control key and click on the thumbnail go select one of the marquee tools here uh, or any selection tool click the refine edge button and you can try painting with this on top of this but uh, for this particular image the result was not really nice for for my taste Okay, something like that well, actually I don't know why but now it, look, it worked a bit better but well and then you select this layer mask and click OK and it removes the hair and then you can refine it or use other advanced um, selection techniques I also have the um, remask 3 filter but uh, plugin but I never use it so I don't even know how to use it. I've seen some really amazing things that this plugin can do, but uh, I don't use it. So, um, what I did is I created a layer mask. I got the brush tool, uh, use this hardness set to zero, and paint with black on this layer mask to hide part of the hair like that. And then I use another technique for this particular image. If you leave it like that, it's almost almost no problem because the hair looks uh, well. It doesn't look bad. But if this, if you thought this was a hair masking tutorial, I think you will be disappointed because I will not go into too much detail here. Um, I'll show you how to repaint the hair here and uh, using that technique that I was talking about create paint some dots with the brush tool like that and I'll delete the other layers and select everything and edit define brush preset and click OK so this I just created this a custom brush undo and with this so I'll create this uh, really quick custom brush then um, Select it, select the brush tool, select your brush that you just created, which is this one, and then go here on the brushes window, decrease the spacing, and on the shape dynamics, activate the brush projection. And uh, that's pretty much it. Let's set the transfer as well. And basically, what you do is I'll decrease the brush size a bit. With this brush what you do is select the layer mask and paint with white because you want to bring back part of the hair and just paint like that so uh, it's really good you can create some uh, really nice effects but well this uh, was really quick so Uh, but for this tutorial, uh, you can use uh, other other brushes like what brushes that you have here, or just paint with a single brush. It's a really hard brush and one or two pixels, and paint with white. And just uh, if you have a tablet, it's a bit easier because you can set the uh, the transfer to be controlled with the pen pressure, and you can uh, you can control it a lot better. So you can. Like paint, paint back the hair like like that, and when you zoom back, uh, so uh, you pretty much get the same effect, but with just a single uh, with just a single brush. Um, 
something like that. I want to decrease the opacity a bit and the flow. So that's why you need to leave that edge there, because that way you can paint back. Uh, you can paint back the hair. And when I'll zoom back to 100%, you'll see the effect. It's almost uh, like it. It looks like her natural hair, so. Okay, something like that. Uh, that part that doesn't look really nice there, but anyways. And you can do the same for the boys here, just a few lines there, like that. I've seen people using the smudge tool here, so it's basically the same thing, but, uh, well, with different results. Uh, See that? So at 100% it looks a bit better. Okay, that's the hair there. Uh, this one is a bit too too dark, but uh, we can maybe paint a few ones more here. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the hair there. But we need to make more adjustments to the couple. And what I did is I wanted to make it a bit brighter. I, want to, I wanted to make them a bit brighter. So I used the levels adjustment again as clipping mask so I will clip them to the couple layer because I only want to affect this particular layer and for the mid-tone I didn't touch the shadows but for the mid-tones I set this to 1.25 and the highlights to 242 okay and take a look at how it looks now it looks a lot brighter which is what I wanted great now we are almost uh, getting to the end one other thing to the columns what you can do you can also use layer styles for them, uh, for the whole group. Well, depending on where the light is, you can use the styles for the whole group. And you can uh, use the inner shadow. Uh, well, actually, you cannot use it for the whole group because we will use to add, we need to add the shadows from two different sides. So for the left one, for example, you can use the inner shadow. And we need to uncheck the global light because we have the global light for this um, part here. So we don't want to change that. So we want a particular shadow angle for this uh, column here. So I set the angle to 180, so 180 degrees. You can increase the distance like that and you will see the shadow appearing there. And if you increase the size, you can uh, put that side into shade and you can uh, increase the, sh the shadow there on that side. And then of course you need to decrease the opacity and take a look at that. And if you want to add a light on this part, you can use inner glow maybe. Yep, and change the blend. Let's try to color dodge, but use another color. Like for example, this one, and maybe increase the size and decrease the opacity is too strong. See that? So that you can add shadow and light to an object using layer styles. And you can do the same for the, for this one. But, um, well, I want to add a light here. So um, I will use a gradient that I created on a previous tutorial when I showed you how to create uh, a sun using gradients. So uh, I will create a new layer on top of the background. Well, actually the background was too, a bit, is too unsaturated. So I'll use a hue saturation adjustment to add the saturation. Let's try, yeah, about 30 for the saturation, maybe minus six, yeah. Cause I have the values here. So um, maybe it's a bit too saturated. Let's try 25. Okay, uh, just to make it a bit more colorful. And on top of that, I added a gradient adjustment and I used a gradient that I no longer have here because I resetted the gradients. It's this one. Okay, so I created this gradient to make a sun and I'll have to click new. Uh, check my other tutorial if you want to see how I use this, but I'll show you here again. So what you do is add a gradient adjustment and select this gradient. And uh, we need to change the style to, to radial. 
and I want to invert to reverse that to set the reverse and this looks like a sun almost uh, as I said check the other tutorial that I uh, where I created this and set the blend mode with the screen and then I wanted to move this uh, if you want to move the gradient you have to, you cannot move it from here so you have to double click on the thumbnail to open this uh, gradient fill window and now you can move this wherever you want and I added it right here just to add a bit of a light glow there and click OK. Okay so now we are ready to make the final adjustments, make color and light effects. As I said uh, on the beginning of this tutorial I want to show you how I created um, the color effects and uh, the light effects for this uh, manipulation. Right now the image looks nice, but you can create a sort of a, I wanted to make a sort of a dreamy effect and I don't know, something a bit more um, creamy if you want to, I don't really know how to explain it, uh, but uh, you'll see what I will do now. So the first adjustment that I used um, was a gradient map. And for that, the colors that I used uh, I got them from the photographic toning, so if you click this icon, once the gradient editor opens, um, by the way, the gradient, the photographic toning are only av available in Photoshop CS6, I think. So um, select the photographic toning, uh, click OK, and don't save. So you get all of this uh, gradients, and I used this one. And then I changed the blend mode of this uh, gradient map adjustment layer to color. And I set the opacity to 15% and you can see the effect that we get. Uh, we get a slight tone of red on the whole image. Then I added a selective color adjustment and for this particular image I just used the reds and the yellows and I have the values here. For the reds I have minus 18 then minus 3. For the yellows I have minus 12 and for the black, I have minus eight. The black controls the brightness of the tone, in this case, the reds. So if you wanna make the, the reds uh, brighter, you decrease the amount of blacks, uh, so you, you remove darkness, uh, in other words, okay? That's why you make it brighter. And it becomes darker if you wanna, if you increase the values here. I rather have a tutorial explaining uh, how these adjustment layers uh, work. And then for the yellows, we have nine. Oops, on the, we start from the top. Nine minus 19. For the yellow, we have minus 31. And for the black, we have zero. So uh, you can see the effect that we get before and after. Basically, we add more light on the image and we change a bit the yellows and the reds. And then another effect which uh, totally changes the look of our image is I added a solid color adjustment. I used this on other of my tutorials, on other manipulation tutorials. And what you do is select um, purple or blue tone, uh, depending on what you like, and select, uh, I don't know, the, the saturation also depends on what you like. I'll change the blend mode in a second so you can uh, you can see the effect. But the important thing here is to select a really dark tone, uh, really, really dark tone, like that, and click OK. And now I'll change the blend mode of this to Exclusion. Uh, exclusion. OK, so this is uh, what it looks like. It takes a bit some of the light on the image and it kind of inverts it. Uh, see the before and after. OK, so this, mm, I don't know, I think it softens the image a bit. Uh, and it's too strong the effect, okay? And uh, But instead of decreasing the opacity, what you do is just use a darker tone, because if you use black, the effect uh, is invisible. There's no effect at all, because with the exclusion, uh, the effect is invisible. So um, if you wanna you if you want to have less effect, uh, use a darker tone. Uh, I wanna show you what happens if you use a really d a bright color like this. So what it does, if I choose black, uh, if I choose blue, sorry, what it does, the highlights become yellow, which is the opposite of blue, and the shadows become blue. So by using a lower tone, uh, you decrease the amount of effect. And also if you use a really 
uh, saturated value, uh, the colors become more saturated. And if you use um, a neutral color, uh, you get, uh, uh, you invert the whole image, okay? So it's a really strange effect that happens with this exclusion blend mode, but you get a really nice result. So I, I usually leave it here um, close to the middle, maybe a bit more saturated and get a tone like that. So this is the effect. And then another um, adjustment layer that I used is a color balance. And uh, here I also have the values if you want to use them, but uh, I always say in my tutorials that the exact value, the exact num number that I'm using here uh, is not really important because uh, maybe you will not get the same uh, result because it depends on what you already have on the image. The important thing here is to know what you're doing. So um, I have for the shadows 10, 0 and uh, 2. By the way, the, I uncheck preserve luminosity, so leave this to off. And what you do here is um, change the balance of, uh, of the colors. In this case, I have 10, which is a positive value, means I take away cyan and add more red. So I, as I said, I have a tutorial about how to use this, but uh, I, those values were for the shadows, so 10, 0, and 2. And for the midtones, we have minus 5, minus 9, and minus 10. And for the highlights, 11, 7, and minus 10. Okay, so on the highlights, we added more yellow. And this is the effect that we got. See, we made the image a bit brighter. Uh, we added, it was too cold on highlights. Uh, so we added more, um, more of a warming effect on the highlights. And well, that's uh, all the adjustments uh, that I added, but we're not done yet. Next, what I did is I created a stamp. So with the top adjustment selected, press Shift, Alt, Control and E or Shift, Alt, Control and E on a PC. And you will, what you will do is select what you, what you see here on the image, you will uh, it's like a snapshot of all the layers, so it merges all the layer onto a new, onto a new layer. And let's name this uh, stamp one. And I usually turn this into a smart object. And this is the only step where I use filters uh, and plugins if I have. And for in this case, I used um, a filter. So go to filter, render, and choose lighting effects. For this particular image, it is not really that necessary to use it, but um, I don't know, I, 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 I wanted to use it. So, uh, as you can see, I used a really big soft light. This was the last soft light, uh, spotlight, sorry, that I used. So, uh, incre increase a bit the hot spot. I don't want to have a vignetting effect here, or I do want to have it, but almost invisible. So, really, really, uh, really um, little effect there. Uh, what I do want to have is I want to reduce this uh, option here that says metallic. Uh, this controls the um, the contrast. So if you set this to really ne to negative values, what you do is reduce the contrast between the highlights and shadows, and that also softens a bit the image. And the other values uh, depend on what you have on the image. You don't want to blow the highlights. Uh, see this. Uh, highlights here on the on the clouds here you don't want to do something like that because you also take a look here at, at this part of the image are really blown out the highlights so you don't want to do that so here you can uh, also play with the ambience uh, change the ambience light to whatever you want so once you have it click ok and then another filter that I used uh, is the topaz detail so we're going to filter, topaz labs and topaz detail too. Uh, as I said, this is the only plugin that I use. And uh, I'll reset everything and just increase the small details a bit. I want to go to one to one so I can see it a lot better. Okay, so I want to boost a bit the small details, not too much. I want to also increase the middle details and also the large details, but not too much. 
okay so see the result before and after see that so that's why uh, I like this um, this plugin and also because we have this um, sliders here this cyan and magenta this three sliders here really can change the image take a look at that so I don't remember what I used here but uh, uh, I'll just try different settings here and see what we get I think what this uh, sliders do is take the channels and uh, it's almost like the color balance but they kind of control the brightness of each uh, channel so in this case I'm on the magentas and the greens and on the blues let's see what we can get okay let's leave it on negative values like that and uh, maybe the saturation boost it a bit and let's see what we can do with the hue I want this positive values and I have too much saturation okay I think I like how it looks now okay and I'll click OK now and with these two filters, I want to show the results. So before and after. I don't know if you're really, if you're able to see this on the video, but we have more details and a bit of a different color tone here. And now, as a final touch, um, this what I what I will do now works a lot better on high resolution images, which is the res. Uh, uh, which is what I had here. The image is four thousand pixels wide, so. This is really big, so. Uh, but I think this uh, could also work on this particular image. What you do is once you're done with that, take another uh, another stamp with Shift Alt Command and E or Shift Alt Control and E. So after you create the stamp, I'll name this to Stamp Two. Um, go to Filter, and this is only available in Photoshop CS. Uh, six uh, choose the oil paint filter and the important thing here is to reduce the shine to zero and you can see the effect that you get it really looks uh, too extreme and as I, uh, that's because as I said it works a lot better on high resolution images but still you can create a nice effect so um, let's see the important thing here is the stylization and reduce the cleanliness uh, a bit, maybe increase it a bit like that. For this particular image, it doesn't look really nice, but uh, I did this especially for the um, to, to soften a bit the image and for the uh, hair or maybe for the skin here and uh, for the shirt. And once you're done with that, click OK. And you can create a layer mask if you want uh, to reduce the effect a bit. Um, and then use a, a brush, a soft brush and set the opacity and the flow of the brush to let's see about 20 and the flow as well and just uh, reduce the effect on some places where you can see it's not looking nice something like that or simply just reduce the opacity to about 50% and you will still see that you get a nice result because the image becomes a little softer on some places like uh, for example these leaves here it will not, it will not look nice so um, what you can do is just maybe increase the more the opacity of the layer and then uh, use this layer mask with the higher opacity and flow to completely remove the effect on these areas uh, where the effect is not looking too nice uh, maybe here a bit so uh, you will see that the image will look a lot better than uh, than for example this well I don't know it depends on what you like but as I said on a high resolution image the result looks uh, really uh, really nice uh, because once you make it smaller um, you will not see the, the oil paint effect and the only thing you will see is a soft looking image I don't know how to, to describe it but uh, on my website you will see you will see the result so that's uh, 
that's pretty much all. What you can do uh, also is on the stamp one, you can add another filter from the filter gallery, which is called the um, diffuse glow, and just reduce the graininess to zero, and add a bit of glow and increase the clear, uh, the clear amount. Maybe set the glow amount to one and reduce the clear amount to like, I don't know, maybe 14 in this case. And that will add a bit of a, a bit of um, mist around, around the highlights. Uh, that's it. That's the manipulation that I wanted to show you how to, how to create. I hope you learned something new. And if you liked my video, uh, if you like this tutorial, uh, check my YouTube channel. I have a lot more there and also on my website. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you on my next tutorial.